Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about The Man From U.N.C.L.E., the latest film from director Guy Ritchie based on the TV series of the same name and starring Henry Cavill, Army Hammer, Alicia Vikander, and Hugh Grant. It all starts when a brilliant nuclear scientist is kidnapped by some terrorists, and this scientist has apparently discovered a cheap and easy way, or at least a relatively cheap and easy way, to enrich uranium. And this has many people from many nations rather afraid, because you don't want terrorists to have access to nuclear weapons. That's just not done. And rival agents Napoleon Solo and Ilya Kuryakin, from the CIA and KGB respectively, are ordered by their governments to team up and hunt down the terrorists before they acquire their own nuclear warhead and do unspeakable things with it. Or at least sell it to someone who will. They are joined by the scientist's daughter Gabby, who is there to help the agents track down her father, and might possibly have a few secrets of her own. Because let's face it, it wouldn't be a spy movie if a bunch of people didn't have secrets. Now, before I start talking about my thoughts on the movie, let's get this out of the way right now. I have never seen the show. I know the basic premise, but that's it. I've never been able to catch it on syndicated reruns or anything like that, and obviously the original run of the show was way before my time. So I'm going into this completely cold. I have no idea whether or not this succeeds as an adaptation. If anyone does know, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, but I'm judging this purely as a movie, nothing more. Now that that's out of the way, this movie has apparently been in development hell for quite some time, dating all the way back to 1993, if you can believe it. They cycled through several writers and directors, including Quentin Tarantino and Steven Soderbergh, and at one point Tom Cruise was even attached to play the role of Napoleon Solo, but he had to drop out because of Mission Impossible. But finally, here we are in 2015, and they got the movie made with Guy Ritchie at the helm. The end result is much better than you would expect from a movie that has been in development hell for so long. I really like this one. This was a very fun spy thriller, and actually serves as kind of a prequel of sorts to The Man from U.N.C.L.E., because they don't actually get their uncle codename until the very end of the movie, and they don't even tell you what uncle stands for until the credits. The movie is definitely a period piece. It's, of course, set in the 1960s, much like the show, but Richie really tried to make this look and feel like a 60s movie, with the color palette and the soundtrack and the old-school split-screen montages. I really like the feel of this one. Henry Cavill plays Napoleon Solo, the cool, classy, and deadly American secret agent. He's well-trained for any situation and very rarely loses his cool, even when the situation goes horribly, horribly wrong. Sort of feels like an American James Bond in a way. And on the other side, you have Army Hammer playing Ilya Kuryakin, his Russian counterpart, who is very much the opposite. He's still very deadly, but whereas Solo prefers stealth and finesse and accuracy, Kuryakin just prefers pure old-fashioned brute force. He is fast and strong and tireless, and while Solo prefers to hide in the shadows and snipe you from a distance, Kuryakin will just run up to you and rip the door off your car and throw it at you. Really, he actually does this. He rips off a car door and throws it at them. And I did like that they didn't just make him the stereotypical dumb brute. I mean, he is a brute to be sure, but he is very intelligent. We also have Alicia Vikander as Gabby Teller, who is the daughter of the nuclear scientist and helping Solo and Kuryakin track him down. And thankfully, this character is not just along for the ride. She's not just there to be protected by Solo and Kuryakin. She has a very active role in the movie. Overall, I thought all three actors did a pretty good job, although there were a couple of moments where Cavill's American accent was just a bit off. It wasn't terrible, but... There were a few questionable syllables here and there. Hugh Grant has a small part in the movie, and he's just as good as he always is. The main villain in the movie is played by Elizabeth Debicki, and I thought she did a pretty good job overall. Very playful sort of villain, but also very dangerous at the same time. The story was pretty solid overall, felt like a nice little throwback to the old school spy movies. The action sequences were a lot of fun. I especially liked the big chase sequence towards the end of the movie. It has a pretty good sense of humor. I mentioned how Solo and Kuryakin are constantly trying to one-up each other, and that leads to some very funny moments. There's one scene in particular that involves a picnic basket, and I will say no more because I don't want to spoil it, but... <laughs> God, that scene was awesome. When you see the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. One thing that Guy Ritchie did with this movie that I thought was very interesting is the timeline jumps around quite a bit. 
There are a few moments where they'll show you the setup for a big sequence of events, and then they'll suddenly jump forward and show you the outcome for that sequence, and give you kind of a hint as to what may have happened, but then a moment later they'll flash back and show you what actually happened, which may not necessarily match up with what you're thinking. It definitely keeps the audience guessing, and I like what they did there. My only real gripe with this movie is the ending. It just felt like a bit of an anti-climax. Um, basically, I mentioned there's this big chase sequence towards the end of the movie, which is a lot of fun, but that's not the very end. After that chase sequence, they still have to go and finish off the main villain. And the sequence of events that leads to them finishing off the main villain just... It seems like kind of an abrupt end, especially after that huge action sequence before it. It's just, it felt like it really should have ended with that and not with the way they chose to end it. I can't say much more without going into spoilers. But it did leave me with a bit of a feeling of, that was it? Huh, okay. But overall, this was a very fun spy thriller. I like the style, I like the humor, I like the 60s throwback. Um, compared with other spy thrillers that have come out recently, I don't think it's as good as Mission Impossible. Time will tell if it's as good as Spectre or not. Probably won't be, but we'll see. But still, I think this is worth seeing. It's, at the very least, it's worth a matinee. And again, I have no idea if this succeeds as an adaptation, but just as a movie, pretty good. And that's all I have to say about The Man from Uncle. So until next time... Why isn't it the men from Uncle? Because there's two of them. Well, two and one, one whatever. T till next time, take care.